Just kidding. One more for you this year. Um, I wrote this story back in January and I've wanted to share it with you, but I've been nervous to share it with you because it's so deeply personal in nature and also I didn't know how to preface it. Um, so I think the best way is just to describe the headspace I was in when I wrote this. Well, I just had that unbelievable end of a Lizzie McGuire movie, surreal experience, you know, with Stone at the uh, Chris Cornell tribute concert and, and travel is always exhausting and we, we flew back and and Ruthie's off to work all of a sudden and Cortland's off to school and I'm left alone uh, with my thoughts and, and Stone had asked me would I write something for the Pearl Jam website. Thanks for the specific direction, Stone. So in my exhausted emotional state all by myself, I, I wrote this um, and narrated it and it, it's mainly to me to, to kind of rehash how things came to be this way that, you know, those years ago I went to a Pearl Jam concert and it changed the course of my entire life, as I'm sure is true with many of you. Uh, and for that reason, as the intense Pearl Jam fans that we are, I think you'll relate to a lot of this, um, maybe in a, in a slightly different way uh, than I did, but but certainly very in a very similar way. Um, so so I did. I wrote it and I and I sent it off to Stone, and and he liked it. He listened to it twice. <laughs> I know I know he did because he said, "Man, that was great." And then the amount of time that the story is long went by, and then he said, "Man, that was really great." <laughs> and then that that uh, got me introduced to Tim, you know, who runs the Ten Club, and that got me onto the Pearl Jam newsletter, as many of you know. And they didn't use this for anything, but but I get to share it with you now, so I'm very proud to share it with you now, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, there's no fancy pictures, or, or it's it's just a black screen. It's just so don't maybe listen to this at work, maybe somewhere quiet. Um, but yeah, without any further ado, the short story I wrote then. <laughs> It is awesome to be a Pearl Jam fan. Prior to what I'm about to share with you, there have been two moments of great poignance in my musical life. The first was my first, my very first concert, which just happened to be a Pearl Jam concert. Days before my 18th birthday, on the binaural tour. Now, I was a teenager in the 90s. We barely had internet. Up until the first note of that show, I don't think it fully dawned on me that seeing my heroes perform was something that I could even do. The visceral power of that moment jarred my life onto a different course, leading me on the passionate search for the golden answer to the question, how do they do that? What a gift it is to have an exact moment to look back on that marks the beginning of a quest. I bet if you look back hard enough, you have that too. Anyway, that very night, I dusted off my guitar, which until then spent about as much time in the closet as it did in action, and wrote my very first song. It was a bad song, but it was a song. The ensuing happenstances in my life led me on a drive west with Riot Act on the stereo, my turtles in the back, one crappy acoustic guitar in the trunk, and the $1,200 I'd saved at my summer job with no plan and nothing but the faith that if I followed my inner voice and worked hard at something, the rest would figure itself out. Long story short, I became a guitar teacher. Everybody's heard the saying, the best way to learn is to teach, and that is so true. At first I knew nothing compared to what I know now, but that didn't matter because I knew at least one more thing than the kids I was teaching, and if I didn't know what they wanted to learn, that was fine too because I had a week until our next lesson to figure it out. There is very seldom anything other than you standing between you and the thing that you want. I didn't go to school for years or wait until I crossed an arbitrary mark of ability. I just made it work as well as I could with what I already had and kept feeding it so it would grow. The second moment of poignance happened after I'd been teaching for a couple years. I was feeling like perhaps it wasn't exactly quite dignified and I should do something else with my life. The inspiration of the first concert was fading. This sentiment coincided with a trip to visit my grandparents, which due to geography and travel budget was regretfully seldom. When I told my grandpa what I was doing for a living, he sensed that I enjoyed it and said simply and with conviction, you found your thing. Those four words spoken by the only person who could have said them with such an impact put my soul at ease and I was free to continue on my quest for the golden answers. Thank goodness that happened. Random little things that keep us on course. I'll bet you have some of those too. 
It's the middle part of this kind of story when you're in the story and it's unfolding in microscopic increments, day by day, month by month, and year by year, when things can start to feel dull and disconnected from your original muse. But I think if you take a moment to write it down in retrospect, you'll be struck by just how incredible the things you are doing right now are. I'm talking to you, but here's mine. Pearl Jam made Backspacer while I, through sheer dint of showing up every single day and being an infallibly friendly guy, filled my teaching schedule to capacity with lessons and band classes. Pearl Jam made Lightning Bolt while I broke off and started my own music school. It flourished. From Riot Act to Lightning Bolt, I personally taught about 30,000 guitar lessons and sparked so very much joy of playing in so many people. I point this out not to brag, but just to say that little things accumulate day by day, and that all those times I went to work even when I was sick and even when I hadn't had a day off in a month are worth it because I can now share this feat in earnest. The memory of feeling like your brain is falling out due to being overworked fades quickly compared with the pride of what you've accomplished, which I think only grows. I'm willing to bet you know this. Wanting to channel my obsessive nature into an outlet that wouldn't run me down over the next decade, the idea of moving my teaching efforts to a YouTube channel grew slowly in my brain over a few years. I thought to myself, Kyle, that's what I call myself when I think to myself, now what could I talk about endlessly so I'll never run out of material? The answer was obvious, Pearl Jam songs. And so, one day in June 2016, I turned on the camera, having made the agreement with myself to do it whether or not anybody watches and to keep doing it, not with success as the aim, but just for the love of doing it. The exact sentiment from Chris that Lily Cornell shared with us at the tribute concert. There is power in this truth. Fueled by an unfettered love of Pearl Jam and Pearl Jam related songs, my new outlet is going strong. And I'm so blessed to have found what feels like to me a lot of folks who want to have this party together. Spreading the joy that comes from learning how to play our favorite songs and perhaps reassimilating all of those patterns of neural impulses into works of our own. Not in the hopes of selling out stadiums, but just for the joy of creating. Then one day, very recently and completely out of the blue, I received a text message from someone claiming to be Stone Gossard thanking me for teaching him some Chris Cornell songs and inviting little me to the tribute concert. This is where I start to tear up, because that moment, the moment when the identity-verifying selfie came, reached back through 19 years to gather up every trial, triumph, inspiration, bead of sweat, just everything since that first note of that first concert, yanking them into the present and overstuffing them into a bursting-at-the-seams ball of feelings that I in a good way, was absolutely not equipped to handle. I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds when I say that now, as Tom Morello said about Chris, I'm learning the curious new skill that is being a friend and a fan at the same time. It's a very cool thing, and I can't describe in words how it felt to be at the tribute concert in this context. Yes, I can. Wearing that friends and family badge given to me by Stone, my favorite guitar player of all time by a wide margin, the guy who, without knowing it, sparked my quest, made me feel like part of the club. It's a simple little thing to say, but it's the best feeling ever. So thank you, Stone. At the concert, you asked, so what do we do now? If I may, I'd like to give you and Matt, Jeff, Mike, Ed, and everyone else contained in that we, one answer to that. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, because even if you can't possibly be aware of it, every time you strike a note, something good happens somewhere to somebody. It is awesome to be a Pearl Jam fan.